Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, I will be telling you about the Java environment. Like what does entire Java environment consist of? So let's see this in the video. Basically, a Java environment have two things. First thing we can say is JDK and then JRE. These are the two important parts of the Java environment. JDK, we can say it is known as the Java development. It is known as the Java development toolkit okay this is your java development toolkit whereas jre stands for java runtime environment okay so these are the most two important components that we need to have in your java program or the java program is run running on this java environment these two components only okay so let's dig up into these two first of all java development toolkit java development toolkit is basically it is providing all the necessary classes packages and files libraries that are important for our execution of my java program okay so we can have the java we in this we can have this java c command java command which is the interpreter it interprets the java source code and then we can have java c that is the java compiler that is necessary for compiling our program and then in the you can have also java p what is it doing java p is converting the machine code that is of zeros and one into our human readable code so that we can understand what java is trying to say to us whenever some error or something occurs or any other things we have to do many more then we have the java debugger that is very important for us java debugger is something like where we have to run our java program okay let me give you a real world example this is my whenever we have seen that we have already installed eclipse in my previous video so let's go for this basic i'm not telling you the program but this eclipse ide is what my java development toolkit because it will give me all the classes packages that i need for my program you can have many other uh, IDEs that could be your NetBeans. You can use NetBeans. You can use Eclipse. You can use BlueJ and many more. You can use VS Visual Studio also and many more. So these are the, they provide you the Java environment where you can code. So these are the development toolkits. Okay, so this is your Java debugger that I showed you. This is one of the example of a Java debugger where you can write your Java code. After this, what I was trying to explain you is Java runtime environment. This is an important concept that you should know. In Java runtime environment, we have many things. Okay. First of all, we have predefined libraries that we can use in Java runtime environment, JRE. Second most important thing in this we have in Java virtual is Java virtual machine. Okay, this is my Java virtual machine, which is the most important part of my Java runtime environment as it consists as we have the compiler and the interpreter and this compiler and interpreter works with the virtual machine or this interpreter is only known as the Java virtual machine. They work together to convert our entire Java source code or our program into the computer readable language that is of binary language of 0 and 1. Okay. So this is a very important concept because of this Java virtual machine only. This Java virtual machine, you are able to produce a platform independent language, a platform independent language. Without this, you won't be able to produce a platform independent language. Java platform independence comes due to the Java runtime environment, which is having this Java virtual machine, which help us to make Java a platform independent language. That is whenever if I wrote a code in Macintosh operating system and I run it on Windows 10, it will run without any error. So this platform independence is achieved due to Java virtual machine, which is an important part of a Java runtime environment. It what basically let me give you give you a very simple small glimpse over what ha what is happening in this. Okay, so if I have a program and we know I want to execute this program in another operating system okay so this was let's say macintosh operating system and this is my linux operating system so what we'll do our comp rest of the programming language they just directly compile or interpret into the machine code but what java does java instead of going the directly of uh, taking our source code and converting it into the machine code that is of 0 and 1 it produces a special intermediate code that is known as this byte code 
this bytecode being platform independent works on every other platform so what happens here our program is been compiled and it is transformed into bytecode and this bytecode is interpreted by the java virtual machine and it is converted into a language of zeros and one so what are the three steps that we require a source code is first converted into by bytecode and this bytecode is platform independent and this is converted into machine code or a language of zeros and one or binary you can say so this is what java is doing to make it platform independent we will take up deep in upcoming videos but that's it this is your entire java environment that you should know and especially the java virtual machine what java virtual machine is doing it is converting this byte code into the machine code that makes it platform independent okay so this is a java virtual machine or people call it as jvm also so it means the same java virtual machine or java or jvm what is that i repeat it converts the byte code into the machine code or zero of one that's it for the video meet you in the next video